ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम थर्ड कैंटो थर्टी एथ चैप्टर एंटाइटल्ड एंटाइटल्ड डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ बाय लॉर्ड कपिला ऑफ एडवर्स फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज टेक्स्ट नंबर ट्वेंटी एटता मिश्रा रौरवाद्याशयातना भुंक्ते नो वा नारी वा मित संगेन निर्मिता ट्रांसलेशन एंड प्रपोर्ट बाइज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपात की जाए ट्रांसलेशन मेन एंड विमेन हुज लाइफ वेर बिल्ट अपॉन इंडलिजेंस इन इलिसिट सेक्स लाइफ आर पुट इन टू मेनी काइंड ऑफ मिजरेबल कंडीशन इन द हेल्थ नोन एज तामिश्रा अंध तामिश्रा एंड रवरवा प्रपोर्ट बाय शिल प्रभुपात materialistic life is based on sex life the existence of all the materialistic people who are undergoing severe tribulation in the struggle for existence is based on sex therefore in the vedic civilization sex life is allowed only in a restricted way it is for the married couple and only for begetting children but when sex life is indulged in for sense gratification illegally and illicitly both the man and the woman await severe punishment in this world or after death In this world also they are punished by virulent diseases like syphilis and gonorrhea and in the next life as we see in this passage of Shrimad Bhagavatam they are put into different kinds of hellish conditions to suffer In Bhagavad Gita first chapter illicit sex life is also very much condemned and it is said that one who produces children by illicit sex life is sent to hell It is confirmed here in the Bhagavatam that such offenders are put into hellish conditions of life in Tamisra and the Tamisra and Raurava the sense the bhakti dance purport So we are seeing in this chapter Lord Kapila explaining to his mother about the uh, about what happens to a conditioned soul who indulges in sense gratification all his life and in today's verses lord kapila is describing about the hellish planets and what awaits a sinful condition so there was very close description of the life of a conditioned soul how he nears death and post death what happens to him all of that is being described and how in some of the hellish planets his entrails are pulled out by hounds and vultures and he is still alive to see it jivitaha because he does not have a gross body there if the gross body is there if you pull the entrails the person will die that doesn't serve the purpose that was explained in an earlier verse by kapila deva so he is given a body of subtle body which has all of these features and he can experience all of these kinds of painful situation his limbs are lopped off torn asunder by elephants hurled down from hill tops and held captive in water or in caves and in particularly in today's verse uh, the last one lord kapila is describing the effects of illicit and illegal sex life निर्मिताजॉयमेंट एंड वॉट अवेट्स दम इज Tamisra and the Tamisra and Raurava, and in the purport, Sri La Prabhupada has explained that materialistic life is all about sex life. <clears throat> so.
so very strong statements about the effects of sinful activities what a conditioned soul has to go through quite scary hearing all of this in the Bhagavatam about the hellish conditions and what is very striking is that even though living entities note it or hear about it somehow sometimes the living entities still indulge in sinful activities why does that happen what forces or impels someone to commit sinful activities even if one is aware of what are the hellish conditions of life painful conditions of life one has to go through actually this question comes up in the Bhagavad Gita Arjuna asks exactly this question and what follows is a very interesting description in the Bhagavad Gita towards the end of the third chapter Arjuna's question is particularly this Athakena prayuktoyam papam charati purushaha what impels a living entity to commit papam charati purushaha kena prayuktoyam and Arjuna's question is anichanna pi varshneya bhaladiva niyojitaha the conditioned soul is engaged in baladiva very forcefully even though he doesn't want so what is it that is forcing him forcing a living entity to commit sinful activities even though he knows it is not right he does not want to do it but still he indulges in what follows after this question that Arjuna has asked to till the end of the chapter is something like an anatomy of uh, Kama. <clears throat> Krishna explains yes that force which indulges a sinful act for impels a sinful impels a conditioned soul in sinful activities is Kama Kama Esha Krodha Esha Rajoguna Samudbhavaha Mahashano Mahapapma Vidhyenam Yehavairinam so if we read these verses till the end of the chapter about 7 or 8 37 to text number 43 so 7 verses <clears throat> uh, we see how karma works how karma is structured what is the nature of karma what is its effect what it does, how does it arise? A very elaborate explanation so that we understand how to deal with this. And, and Krishna also explains how to deal with this. So, Lord begins to explain that this is the, this, what impels a living entity to commit sin is his karma. Karma is the lustful desire. And in the purport to this first verse, Kama Esha Krodha Yeshura Joguna Samud Bhavaha, Prabhupada points out the original love of the living love of Krishna, which is a characteristic of the living entity, is transformed into lust. So uh, some of the attributes of the soul the soul is eternal the soul is conscious the soul is a person uh, soul has freedom these are all the attributes of the soul 
another fundamental attribute of the soul is that the soul has love for Krishna why is it so because Prabhupada explains here that the living entities are made constitutionally for Krishna's enjoyment Prabhupada elsewhere also often quoted a verse from the Upanishad Eko Bahushyama The Lord was one but he became many in the form of the living entities for his pleasure Akamayata Eko Akamayata Bahushyama The Lord when he desired to enjoy he became many so that's why you find a very interesting expression by Srila Prabhupada. Usually we hear this expression, the living entities are part and parcel of the Lord. Prabhupada here explains, the living entities are part and parcel of the ever increasing spiritual bliss of the Lord. So in other words, we are made for giving Krishna pleasure. But Prabhupada clarifies when we say we give pleasure to Krishna and what do we get in return? Suffering? No. We also get our pleasure. So Krishna is the primary enjoyer and we are the enjoyed and being enjoyed we get our pleasure. That's our constitutional position. So we are meant for his pleasure and hence we have love of Krishna but that love of Krishna gets transformed into lust just like there is a white bulb if I wrap a filter around it a green filter the white light becomes green light it's not some some other light it's actually the original white light which has become green in touch with the green filter in the same way the living entity is pure has pure love of God but that love of God in touch with material existence rajoguna rajoguna samudbhavaha it becomes lust and then Krishna explains Mahashano Mahapapma this is a Mahashana it's a devouring force it's an all devouring force Kama is very forceful Mahapapma engages the living entity in sin Vidhyenam Ihavairinam and that lust is the greatest enemy of the living entity and then Krishna explains Dhumena Avriyate Vahnir there are three degrees in which this Kama covers the living entity entity like smoke covering fire or dust covering mirror and like the womb covering the fetus <clears throat> and in the next verse Krishna explains avritam gnana methena gnani no nitya vairina kama rupena kaunteya dushpurena analena cha so the effect of karma is that it covers up the living entity's true knowledge the true knowledge is love of God that's the pure knowledge of the living entity avritam gnana methena gnani no nitya vairina is the eternal enemy it covers up that knowledge kama rupena kaunteya dushpurena analena and this kama is insatiable not that you indulge in karma and then the karma will become pacified and then it will not come up again. So it is dushpurena. Purena means purna, means complete satisfaction. No, this is dushpurena. And in the next verse, Krishna explains where does this karma sit? That's why, you know, this is a very, very interesting uh, anatomy of karma. What, how the karma works, what it does. Then Krishna is explaining, Indriyani mano buddhi rasya dishtana muchyate. This karma sits in three places. Indriyani, manaha, manas, manaha and buddhi. So our senses are the sitting places. Our mind is the sitting place of karma. And 
intelligence is the sitting place of karma <clears throat> in this way karma sits in these three places ethair vimohayatyesha and bewilders the living entity esha gnanam avrutya dehinam how does it bewilder by covering the true knowledge of the living entity it bewilders <clears throat> after this krishna explains so how to deal with this kama tasmatvam indriyanyado niyamya bharatharshabha how do we deal with this kama by indriya niyama by control of the senses so tasmatram indriyanyado niyamya bharatharshabha paapmanam prajahyenam gyana vigyana nashanam again krishna is using uh, prabhupada explains that because arjuna was a warrior krishna is using warrior like terms you can destroy you can kill this enemy who is this enemy and you should kill this enemy conquer this enemy paapmanam prajahyenam jnana vigyana nashanam and kama destroys jnana and vigyana it destroys knowledge and realization so uh, any spiritual advancement we make and any realization we have an indulgence in karma will destroy all of that so niyamya that's why in the vedic culture niyama indriya niyama indriya nigraha is required and that is the only way that is the way to control uh, this lust because indulgence dushpurena analena cha it's like a fire all devouring fire so how does this indriya niyama work that is explained by we'll come back to this in the in krishna's description uh, indriya niyama means the force of the senses may be there the force of the mind may be there because kama creates that force even though the force is there one has to learn to tolerate that force that is the indriya niyama and if we tolerate that force it will go away that's the trick that uh, shastras describe and uh, prahlad maharaj talks about this especially sex and he says kanduti van manasijam vishahet dhira how does one overcome this one the lust especially of sex desire prahlad's answer is kanduti van kanduti is like a itching sensation so sex desire is like an itching sensation and when you get an itch when you have some boil and some itch or something in your body it creates an itching sensation and if you scratch then you're going to aggravate the problem so what is recommended when that itching sensation is there you just tolerate that's called vishaheta vishaheta vishah vishah vishaheta means to tolerate that itching sensation and to tolerate that itching sensation one has to be a dhira dhira means one who is not affected even in the presence of a provocation that is a dhira so kanduti van manasijam vishaheta dhira so this expression vishaheta dhira one should tolerate and become a dhira is uh, the recommendation of prahlad maharaj and the same principle rupa goswami explains in the first verse of the upadesha amrutha where he is describing rupa goswami is describing this body has many urges natural forces and etan yo vishahet dhiran sarvam api mam prithvim sashishya so rupa goswami says this body has vacho vega udharo pasta vega manaso vega krodha vega all of these urges are there in this body 
एथान वेगान यो विषहेत धीरा इफ वन कैन टॉलरेट दीज अर्जेस सच ए पर्सन इज एलिजिबल to create disciples all over the world so that's the qualification rupa goswami is setting forth for a spiritual master in the very first verse of the upadesha amrita actually prabhupada explains uh, many places that uh, it's a it's a spiritual concept it is a spiritual experience how to feel the association of krishna prabhupada explains it is not that krishna is gone 5000 years ago if we live by his instructions we can have his association if our life is governed by krishna's instruction every moment we are leading our life on the basis of the principles given by krishna instructions given by krishna the foundation of our life is krishna's instruction then we can have the association of krishna because one is constantly remembering everything he does in his life he accepts some things rejects something performs something thinks in a certain way desires in a certain way everything is according to the instructions of krishna that is krishna sangha and that is true about if we live a life by the instructions of prahalad maharaj we live we can experience the association of great bhagavatas if we live by the instruction of rupa goswami we can live in we can experience his association in the same way guru's instruction that is why the instruction is guru mukha padma vakya chitte te koriya aikya the spiritual master his instructions chittete aikya means it is made one with our consciousness means what it's an expression it's a poetic expression it means we live by we think by we desire by the instructions of the spiritual master and that is an association and shila prabhupad many times he said that i never felt the separation i never felt that i am separated from my spiritual master because i always live by his instruction i am always serving his mission so uh indriya niyama is a very important principle krishna is saying that and how do we do that indriya niyama because indriyas come with force indriyas actually don't come with force it is the lust when it is sitting in indriya that brings the force so if the indriyas are not affected by lust then it is compared to a a, a snake whose fangs have been removed it could be a cobra if the fangs are removed and the poison glands are removed then you can play with the cobra a child can play with the cobra no fear at all because the poison fangs have been removed in the same way that poison fang lust is freed f- from this system body mind intelligence system then we do not have to fear at all so we have to live in the beginning a sadhaka uh, has to go through this phase of vishaheta dhira the force may be there but one must just tolerate and it will go away this is the instruction of the shastras and the acharyas the force will go and prabhupad gives another example even hunger is like that sometimes we feel hunger pangs like sometimes in the morning when we are chanting we feel hunger pangs but we know till 9:30 you won't get prasadam you just tolerate tolerate and then after some time the hunger pangs will go away this is the principle 
that is why indriya niyama is essential and if indriya niyama is not there if lust rules our life if lust governs our thinking our actions our desires then jnana vigyana nashanam etair vimoha yatyesha one will be bewildered and once all knowledge and realization will be lost so after saying all of this because krishna described the lust resides indriyani mano buddhi asyadishtam asyadishtana mutyate it resides in adishthana means residing where is it where where can we find this enemy it rests in indriya manas and buddhi <clears throat> next krishna is further giving directions ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾನಿ ಪರಾನ್ಯಾಹೂರ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯೋಭ್ಯೋ ಪ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯೇಭ್ಯೋ ಪರಂ ಮನಃ ಮನಸಸ್ತು ಪರ ಬುದ್ಧಿರ್ ಯೋ ಬುದ್ಧೆ ಪರತಸ್ತು ಸಹ ಸೊ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾನಿ ಪರಾನ್ಯಾಹೂರ್ it's actually it this if you translate this ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾನಿ ಪರಾನ್ಯಾಹು ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟ್ ದಟ್ ಆಹುಹು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ indriyani paranyahur it is said that the indriyas are superior it clearly doesn't say krishna is not saying superior to what <clears throat> so prabhupa translates that as the working senses are superior to dull matter and in the in the purport prabhupa explains the senses are the most important aspects of this body right it is through the senses that we act we desire we act all of this we create a conception all of this is happening through the senses the senses are the most important thing in this body and that is why krishna is saying the senses are superior to the body that's the meaning indriyani paranyahur the senses are different outlets for the activities of lust lust is received re- reserved within this body but it is given vent through the senses therefore the senses are superior to the body as a whole the senses are superior to the body as a whole that's the meaning of indriyani paranyahur indriyebhyo param manaha something that is superior to the in- senses is the mind and manasastu para buddhir and superior to the in- mind is intelligence yo buddhe paratastu saha and superior to the intelligence is saha that he and that he refers to the soul so krishna is creating a hierarchy here the lowest is the body then the senses then the mind and then the intelligence and then the soul so this how krishna has created the hierarchy in the last verse which is the concluding verse krishna says evam buddhe param buddha samsthabhyatmanam atmana jahi shatrum mahabaho kama rupa durasadam once again krishna is coming back to kama kama rupa durasadam this kama is a formidable enemy of the living entity durasadam jahi shatrum mahabaho again krishna is inspiring very kshatriya words mahabaho you are mighty armed you jahi shatrum this enemy you kankor how evam buddhe param buddha samsthabhyatmanam atmanam evam in this way buddhe param buddha buddha means knowing buddha knowing what evam buddhe param buddha knowing that the soul is superior to the intelligence in fact the soul is superior to the intelligence the mind and the senses right so knowing this evam buddhe param buddha so it is buddhe param buddha 
knowing that so thus knowing oneself the soul to be transcendental to the material senses mind and intelligence knowing this and knowing this how samsthabhya atmanam atmana if we see this word samsthabhya samsthabhya means sthabhya it related to the word stambha we know stambha means a column or a pillar and what is special about a column or a pillar like we have in this room in this hall unshakable isn't it that's the quality of a pillar unshakable steadiness that's why samsthabhya means completely unshakable so samsthabhya atmanam atmana atma means the self if you simply translate this expression samsthabhya atmanam 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 atmana it means one should control or one should steady the self by the self so this is simply what it means atma samsthabhya atmanam atmana atmanam atmana samsthabhyam you should steady the self by the self so what does that mean so prabhupa translates one should control the lower self by the higher higher self so one should control the but all of them are in 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 the vedic language the word atma can be used all of these things because atma means a sense of identity and the sense of identity we can have we can feel the sense of identity in terms of our body so atma can refer to the body we can feel the sense of identity in terms of our senses in terms of our mind sometimes we feel oh i am so pained by that actually that pain is an emotion it's an experience it is what is going on at the mental level but we identify with the mind and we feel i am pained so my identity sometimes i express through the mind sometimes through the body i am hungry the pangs are being felt by the stomach it's a physiological effect but we identify with the body and we feel i am the i i am hungry i'm feeling the pain that's why the word atma self can mean the body can mean the mind can mean the intelligence can mean ultimately the soul because the ultimate identity is at the soul level because we will cast this body and move on the atatata dehantara prapti hi so our identity was not really at the bodily level it's not even at the mind it's not at the intelligence suppose we solve a problem we are together we are trying to break the problem and then i give an idea oh and everyone says oh such a brilliant idea you gave you are so sharp your intelligence is so sharp then i feel very good about it because i am identifying that intelligence is mine so our identity can rest at the level of the body mind intelligence and ultimately it rests at the level of the soul so samsthabhya atmana atmana one should control the lower self by the higher self one should control the body senses with the higher self with the mind one should control the mind by the higher self the intelligence one should control the intelligence by the higher self which is the soul that is what krishna is saying so one samsthabhya atmana atmana and control steadily samsthabhya not faintly weakly reversibly sometimes i control sometimes i get the lower self to control the higher self no samsthabhya atmana 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 jahi shatrum mahabaho in this way you conquer the uh, self <coughs> conquer the sorry the lust now uh, all of this is very nicely explained by the in the purport of shila prabhupad and if we have to come to that stage samsthabhyatmanam atmanam atmana which means uh, one has steadied the intelligence 
by the soul because soul is superior to the intelligence evam buddhe param buddhva buddhe param buddhva knowing this it actually means coming to the stage of our existence at the soul level and that is known as a transcendental position because at that position when we live at the soul level we are not affected by the forces of the mind intelligence in senses mind and intelligence and that is called a transcendental state and prabhupada is saying that coming to that transcendental state when we are not affected by the forces of the mind or the forces of the lust residing in the senses mind and intelligence is some stabhya and that is the sum and substance of this chapter i'll read this one <coughs> one may not give up work this is the purport to the last verse one may not give up work and prescribe duties all of a sudden but by gradually developing krishna consciousness one can be situated in a transcendental position without being influenced by the material senses and the mind by steady intelligence directed towards one's pure identity intelligence steady intelligence directed towards one's pure identity atmanam atmana samsthabhyam this is the sum total of this chapter so krishna right from the beginning in the third chapter onwards or even before that krishna is bringing this concept of becoming situated on in the transcendental position and to be situated in the transcendental position one must become steady samsthabhyam atmanam atmana and that is why uh, in another place prabhupada explains that if you see rupa goswami's description adhau shraddha tatha sadhu sangatha bhajana kriya anartha nivrutti syat tatha nishtaha the result of anartha nivrutti is nishtha when one becomes freed from the unwanted desires in the material and being disturbed by those desires one becomes nishtha when one becomes nishtha or in that nishtha stage one has to become transcendental and when nishtha is there one become one develops asakti and when one is developed asakti bhava comes about those are the next stages so and uh so from the beginning all through in the in the bhagavad gita krishna is encouraging that we come to this transcendental state of existence and in that state of existence we are not disturbed by the senses mind and intelligence and in that state of existence real bhakti develops and that is the sum and substance of the third chapter of the gita as prabhupada is explaining so why although we know uh, tamisra anda tamisra raura raurava all these hellish conditions are there we hear about all this but still we can become swayed because of the presence of lust which is a vairi the enemy of the living entity and how to control that how to conquer that it is by transcendental consciousness by developing krishna consciousness that is the explanation given in these uh, uh, instructions of krishna and the vedic literatures we'll stop here grantaraj shrimad bhagavatam ki shila prabhupad ki jai